Hello, I'm Johan Furry, the winemaker at Benguelakov Wine Estate in Hermanus, South Africa, and also the soon to be House of Leonard's Lee in uh, Sussex in the UK. So we thought while well, we're sucking up the last bit of sunshine on this side of the world, soon it will be your turn. And uh, for spring and summer coming up, we've selected a few wines for you, a little promo just to get you through these days that we're facing. So we've, um, we've decided on doing a promotion on our Leonard's Lee range of wines. So Leonard's Lee Lake and Gardens um, opened for the public last year. So after many years of being closed, uh, it went through um, a bit of uh, fixing up and restoring and uh, it was restored to its former beauty and opened up last year again. So in celebration of that, we've done these three wines. Um, which we're um, doing a bit of a promotion on. Um, maybe towards the end I'll tell you more about that. Let's, let's just uh, quickly taste you through the wine so you know what's, uh, what's on offer. So the first one is a Sauvignon Blanc wine. So this part of the world where we're in, where we produce the wines, is a region called the Walker Bay, which is really known for Sauvignon Blanc. Sauvignon being one of the signature grape varietals from the, the region. So the Sauvignon that we've selected for the Leonard's Lee label is a nice and crisp, fresh, um, call it a, a vibrant style of Sauvignon. So we select vineyards that really gives us that nice tropical flavors, nice zestiness to the wine. So lots of like gooseberry flavors, fruit salad, and on the palate you've got a nice citrusy um, feel to it. So. Um, all of this wine is fermented in stainless steel fermenters just to further enhance that nice um, fruity crisp character that we're looking for in, in this wine. Um, also as far as the wine making goes, it's a selection of those yeast strains that also really emphasize that, um, the tropical fruit flavors in the wine. So we use a selection of two yeast strains on this. Um, so the two yeast strains both produce different aromas but when we add them into one fermentation you've got all these layers and complexity going in, in, the, in the glass. So and then also really fermented very very cool. So the cooler you ferment the wine the more almost like the more stress you put onto the yeast cells the harder they work the more flavor the more aromatic and the more expressive and tasty um, the wine at the end of the day. So that's the, that's the Sauvignon Blanc. Our second wine that we've got you to select from is a Rosé wine. So you may or may not know, but there's various styles of producing Rosé. You'll see that this one is quite light in color. So the first method of, of doing Rosé, which is really a cheat or a shortcut way of doing it, and like anything in life, when you take shortcuts, the end result isn't always that good. So this first way of doing it is by blending white wine and red wine to get to like a pinkish color, which isn't always great. That You can tell by the color, it's usually a bit darker, more purpley in color. And it's often the more sweeter style of rosé, because by adding the sugar to the wine, you get to mask a lot of those bitterness or harshness or flaws in the wine when what comes with blending red and, and white wines together. The second way of producing rosé is when you've got a, a red wine fermentation is um, to draw off some of that juice before the fermentation sets in. So the, the color from the rosé comes from the, the skin of the berry. So even though the berry is red or black in color, the inside the juice is still white like the Sauvignon Blanc. So when in contact with that skin, almost like a tea bag, it leaches out some of the color into the wine. So the second way, the Sanye method of doing it, Sanye means to bleed off, is when you take a red wine fermentation, so that juice has been in contact with the skins for about two days, you draw some of that off to get more concentration into your red wine, so it's not really a preferred style of making rosé or the, the premium way of, of doing it. And those ones you can also tell by a slightly deeper color, higher in alcohol, because they're sitting at about red wine type of alcohol, so 13 and a half, 14 percent alcohol, and also much richer and bolder style of rosé. 
And the last method, and the method that we use, is to pick red grapes specifically for the production of rosé. So rosé is something we take quite seriously. So we we follow the method of, of picking our red grapes at rosé um, ripeness levels. But more than that, we also have dedicated vineyards to the production of our rosé. So the vineyards that go into the rosé production has got a completely uh, different farming approach and canopy management to them. So we, we try to keep the bunches more shaded by keeping them more shaded in comparison to a red wine production. You, you tend to keep all that freshness and the perfumey florally notes in the rosé. So as far as the growing of the vines go, different process, but also as far as the irrigation of those vineyards go, because we want to keep them happy and growing. And again, because you're looking for this elegance and finesse, where with a red wine, that same vineyard, you'll put more stress and strain on it to keep the berries smaller, to get more color and more tannins into the wine. Everything you do not necessarily want in a rosé wine. So picked for rosé and then fermented again, all in stainless steel, nice and cool, because we're looking for all that freshness, that strawberry, cherry, cotton candy, almost like watermelony flavors in the rosé. And because it's no funny shortcuts or anything um, done with this wine, we can still do a dry style. So it's no sugar added to it at all. It's bone dry because there's nothing we need to really hide in this wine. It's got enough fruit coming from the grapes and the fermentation process that we don't have to add any sugar or anything to make it more attractive. So it's a perfect wine on its own, bone dry in, in style. And for, for the men, I often know the guys are so worried about being spotted with a glass of pink wine in their hand. It's now, these days, it's the in thing, you know, might know about the whole brosé theme, where more and more it's men coming into drinking rosé. And as they say, uh, real men drink pink, so don't be worried about being spotted with a glass of pink this year. The chances are good that you'll be enjoying it at home, so it's unlikely that anyone else might spot you. Right, so then the last wine we've got um, in the range is a Shiraz red wine. So in tune with, with the other two wines and keeping in mind that when we get the most visitors to Leonard's Lee is in, in summertime, so we've also with the red, we've kept it um, nice and um, soft on the tannins, so it's really soft and juicy tannins and it's got all these nice um, cherry tobacco-y notes to it. So very soft fruit driven style but being a, a Syrah it's still got that signature Syrah spiciness and a little bit of smoky savoriness that naturally comes with Syrah and in this part of the world which is known as cooler climate um, conditions for grape growing, there's also a little hint of, of white peppery notes in the Syrah as well. So if, you, if you're like me, you often during summertime feel like a glass of, of red wine, but it might be too hot outside. So what I do when I feel like a glass of red in, in summer is just to pop this into the fridge for about 30 minutes just to cool it down a little bit and even if you if you forgot about that and uh, don't tell anybody I told you this but you can even drop a little ice cube in there I know it's frowned upon but take it from me as a winemaker I sometimes do it at home as well because there's nothing worse than having a, a red wine at 20 plus degrees Celsius. I'd rather have it with a little ice cube in it than having a, a soupy type um, red wine, but preferably pop it in the fridge for 30 minutes if you feel like it. These two, um, the lower you can go, the better. By the time you serve it, really chilled, it might be over chilled um, by the time you serve it and have your first sip but by the time you've got your second your third sip it's at the ideal temperature so um, which is uh, you don't have to keep pouring little bits and you don't have to keep on adding ice to chill it down so the lower you can keep this um, stowed away the, the better so coming back to the promotion we've got on these 
We've uh, decided to run a promo where you can get a dozen of these, 12 for 100 pounds. Uh, you can pick and choose and select as you like. So you can do 6 and 6 or you can do 4, 4, 4. Or again, if you're like me, you can do 12, 12, 12. It's totally up to you. They are available from Manning's Heath. Uh, golf club and wine estate which is just down the road from Leonard's Lee which is also sister property of ours um, or from Leonard's Lee itself if you like to pick them up um, just give us a call so we can organize for somebody to be there the easiest the most convenient way obviously would be to order them online which will put all the, the details for you um, below um, and I think yeah that that's it if uh, I'll also add my Twitter handle to, um, to the post, so keep the comments coming, let me know what you think of the wines, which ones you like, how you've paired them, share your photos with us, um, enjoying them hopefully outside when the sun is out, and uh, let's keep the, the conversation going. Cheers.